Tonight is November the 16th, 2016, and I'm going to get started, as promised, on this 6080, 6AS7 uh, amplifier. i got lots of tubes here. Here's a pair. It says uh, Hewlett Packard. They test kind of good. They're all... Actually, every tube that I have here is good except for two of them. Two of them have a dead section, but these are not. 52 and 60, 60 and 58. Oh, I could use those two. Here's three Sylvanias that look almost alike. See, there's a dead one right there. I got a zero. So that one's actually no good. 39, 44, 53, 46, etc. There's a pair. Let's see, what are these things? 59 and... 49, 16, whatever. Best I got. And I got some more over here. Oh, I gotta show you this though. Wow, I did not realize just what monsters these 6336 A's are. I don't know if you can see it here in the camera. Actually, the camera does show things better than I think it does sometimes. But um, uh, these guys right here, the 6080 or 6AS7 take 6.3 volts at two and a half amps. These guys take 6.3 volts at five amps each. If you look in here, these things have dual cathodes in each side. And these actually check pretty good. So maybe I'll use them too. That's a pair of 6336As. A nice little physically matched pair. And here's some Raytheon. 6528s, which measure about the same thing. I think they really are the same thing. Maybe a little tougher, a little less tougher. I don't know. Anyway, got lots of them. Three more in there, 6AS7. So I got, got plenty to do it with. Put those there, so knock them off. I've been testing transformers. One thing I'm blessed with is power transformers. Here's the output transformer I'm going to use. I wanted to show you something about the power transformers here. I've got a, a pair of these guys. Here, let me show you. Yeah, you can read this. You'll like this. <clears throat> okay, 3,500 ohms, center tap. Uh, it's got high impedance secondaries, 250 watts. The 8 ohm tap, the 8 ohm winding is 100 watts. they got two exactly alike. I've played with these before. Now, I figure I'm going to need something in the 1,000 ohm range for a pair of these 6080s. So, I can use this one at 4 ohms. Or if I use this one at uh, 25 one ohm winding at 8 ohms, that'll change my ratio over here by a factor of 3. So, it'll reduce it to about 1,000 ohms. Boy, this thing's heavy. That's all I can hold it. I got two of these beauties. They're actually exactly the same, even the exact same part number. The uh, diagram on them is ever so slightly different. See, that one's small, which I personally like better. This one's large, but it's it's really the same thing. Uh, got lots of power transformers, and I was just testing them, and I was just thinking that, uh, well, this one's probably too big. Look at this back. 2,000 volt center tap, 700 milliamps. I think the one I'm going to use, look at this guy. This thing is heavy as lead. But it's made by uh, Berkeley Scientific Company. Probably put a voltage doubler into it. Look at it. 176 volts at 700 milliamps. Or 97 volts at 550 milliamps. And it's got a 6.3 volt 15 amp winding and a 6.3 volt 12 amp winding. And then all these taps, 105, 17, 126. I write all this stuff down before I paint them. I have painted this one. This thing is, this thing's built like a tank. Must be made out of lead or plutonium or something. But anyway, I think I'll use that for the power. Got lots of power transformers. I am overly blessed with power transformers. But I wanted to show you something that I was doing. And I said, you know what? Safety and staying alive is the most important thing. And um, I'm leaning on my desk right now, as you can probably see my hand. But when I start measuring, I always put one hand in my pocket. This thing is unplugged. Let me get this thing right here so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. 
we this uh, this little uh, triplet meter will measure uh, up to 6,000 volts. This thing's pretty serious. 6,000 AC or 6,000 DC. Um, but when you start measuring, I've made some videos on uh, transformers that have been pretty popular, and I'm and I'm glad. I really am pleased that uh, people like them and find some value in them. But one of the things you're going to do is when you start messing with something like this, trying to figure out what it is, and it is unplugged, and I'm keeping my eye on that. There's the plug. You you don't measure it like this. You don't lean on the desk and lean over your meter and start poking around. You don't you don't do it like this either with two hands. You don't put one here and one there because if your finger slips and you touch that thing and or something. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll show you some things that have gotten me before. I've been back quick enough. Even little things like this. See, I keep the, the tips of these things, how they get worn off. I've been bit by, see how you can grab that thing and you think you're insulated and you're not? So, don't, don't take any chances. Don't ever be sloppy. We're going to measure this and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, I've got this thing on the... Uh, 6,000 volt scale, right there. Common in 6,000. I'm already using one hand. Oops. Well, I think I can just stand it up. You'll be able to see it. Put my left hand in my pocket. I clip this guy on. I clip this guy on. Hand in my pocket. Plug it in. Now the meter isn't measuring very high, is it? But when you put both hands in your pocket and get down here, you see that that is uh, 1,350 volts. That will do you damage, real damage. One hand in the pocket, unplug it. Don't ever get sloppy. You'll regret it. Sooner or later, you'll regret it. You'll either get really hurt or possibly killed. Like I say, leaning on it and hanging over it, using both hands turn into a disaster. It will ruin your day. And a guy like this with a couple of th thousand or a couple of thousand volts, you may not come back. Well anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I've already got a chassis that I've used before. Look at this guy. Kind of looks like I, uh, I kind of remember this. It's been a long time ago though. I don't know why I was driving it with 6IN8. Maybe that's why it didn't work too well. Okay, I got a couple there. Looks like I was putting KT90s parallel. Must have been experimenting with the output transformer too, but I did remember, and I do remember now, that these, this output transformer does actually fit in these holes. Cutting the chassis, punching all these holes is a lot of labor. I mean, these things are fairly easy to cut, but just drilling and cutting, oh goodness. I'm just gonna build a mono version of it. The reason I'm going to do this is because I want to know how, how well it works and I want to share it. If I do it here in a vacuum and don't show it and share it with anybody then I'll know but nobody else will know what I've learned. So anyway that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use four. I'm going to use two right here and I'll probably use these two sockets and I'll use the old Williamson style, uh, style drivers with 6S N7s, a pair of 6S N7s pair of 6080s output transformer power right here. We're having a lot of extra holes. It's not going to be a um, amplifier that I'm going to uh, take it to my house and and listen to the stereo on but I will build it very carefully and try to do everything right and um, see this guy right here should fit there and again this should fit there it should make a, a nice little test amp with power supply underneath. Tubes right there. The rest of it will just be, I don't know, I'm pretty picky. I might just put a piece of sheet metal over it just to cover it, just to make it look a little better. So there you go. Give me a, a week or so and we'll see how this thing works. We'll see if these 6080 amplifiers are any good. You know, there's, there's just something that I don't know why it charms us so, but we're just really charmed by triode amplifiers. I guess we think that uh, 
a triode is so nice and simple and beautiful, uh, it has to be the best. How could anything be better? Well, I don't think that's true at all. But uh, we all seem to feel that way. I'm into push-pull amplifiers. I've given up on the single-ended stuff. You know, unless you want to use this transformer right here as a power, and then you want to use another transformer that size or bigger for 15 watts, unless you want to build a 200-pound 15-watt mono block, um, you're not going to get very good low-frequency response out of your SET amplifier. Now, that might, some people may disagree with me, and that's fine. We don't have to agree on everything. But I'm not going to build um, the SET stuff to me is just uh, whatever. If you listen only to vocal and violin and cello and stuff like that, it might be okay. Cello actually might go too low. But they don't, uh, from my experience, I don't see a very good low frequency response out of SET amplifiers because you got to have a big gap in the uh, core to keep it from saturating. And you don't have to have that in push pull amps. So that's my uh, warning here on these big, big transformers like this. Always making sure it's unplugged, working with one hand, even when it's unplugged. And, uh, see this this guy right here is this this thing's pretty this thing's pretty serious. Well, actually I'm not going to use that though. I don't know why I'm showing. Well, I'm just showing you that not to get killed. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, in a week or so, we'll we'll find out how these little. Uh, 6080SA, uh, uh, 6SA7 amplifiers perform.